Okay, with this video, what I'm going to try and do is explain sort of the basics of cylinder records. And we're going to start with the wax ones and work our way up to the celluloid ones. Um, some of this will be introductory and some of it will show some maybe some rarer things. So let's get started. Um, as far as the cylinder record that we're familiar with, the, uh, this size and shape basically, this started in around 1888 when Edison standardized uh, the size of the cylinder he was going to use and basically the type of material that was going to be used to make cylinders. This particular one here is actually really nice. It's quite rare. It's an early wax cylinder and you can tell because of the color. Wax cylinders like this are all very fragile and uh, they, you can sort of date them by color. So the early ones are whitish cream. Uh, what happened was they started manufacturing these cylinders in about 1888. And within a few years, you know, they were always trying to improve them. So there were always changes. Every couple of years, they would look a little bit different. And what they discovered was if they used a higher temperature when they were making the material, uh, the material lasted a little bit longer, was a little more rigid. And they also found that that changed the color a little bit and made them a little darker brown. So this is an early one. When they made this cylinder, what the company would do is they had no way of mass producing them. So what they did was they literally had a machine there and someone sang or played piano and sang into the horn, which cut the groove in the record. Um, that way you got a single record. You weren't really mass producing them. They would sometimes copy this by playing one machine into another or by having several machines recording at the same time. So it wasn't really able to keep up with the demand once they started becoming popular. So this type of cylinder is quite rare because it is one of those one-off type of cylinders. The speed on these wasn't standardized either for a few years. They ranged from about 120 revolutions per minute to about uh, 160 revolutions per minute. So you could get at the slower speed three and a half minutes and at the faster speed a little over two minutes. So that is one of those cylinders. Uh, a little bit while later, you'll find cylinders that are starting to get a little bit darker brown. And as I said, that was a result of changes in the way they manufactured them and changes in the temperature uh, when the material was made. And you can see this one here is a little bit darker brown. It is probably one that was duplicated. By the time they got to this, about 1894, around there, um, they were able to duplicate them by using a method called pantographing it where they played one cylinder and the needle was hooked up to uh, another cylinder uh, uh, recorder and maybe even several, they could have up to like six or eight. And as the, the needle ran over the grooves here, it would cut a corresponding groove into the other cylinder. So that resulted in a lot of wear and tear on this type of cylinder. And so um, they were able to mass produce it in small quantities, but the master might only last a hundred plays and then it was no good but they could turn 100 cylinders, one uh, original cylinder, they could turn into a few hundred. Okay, so that's that cylinder. Um, these cylinders were manufactured by, uh, the Edison, uh, by Edison's company. Columbia was also making cylinders at the time, and you can see a, a Columbia cylinder box, an early one here, and this is an early Edison box. This cylinder would not have come in this box. This is a gold molded record, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, it would have probably come in something more like this. But the Columbia cylinders, the very earlier ones, were actually made by uh, Edison up until about 1894 when they uh, finally figured out a way of making the material themselves. So this one here is a little bit darker brown. It's um, one that was done pantographically. It's a little bit, you can see it compared to this one. It won't come out. It's a little bit darker brown. So this is probably a little bit later, um, probably the late 1890s. The manufacturing of these cylinders, using this as a method of producing cylinders, lasted till about 1902. And that's when it was phased out by Edison. And Columbia actually, even though they came up with a harder material, they were still using this for a few more years as they sort of phased it out more slowly. So this is the, the little bit darker brown one. And then the last one I have here is a Columbia one, which is a later one. Um, from the 1890s and I, I wanted to show you this because of, you can see the mold on it. Anybody who's collected cylinders knows that the wax ones sometimes get moldy 
and really there's there's nothing you can do to get rid of the mold you can polish it a little bit make it look a little bit better but when the mold is eaten into the groove you're going to hear it and it's going to ruin the cylinder so you got to keep them in a, a dry place so those are the early wax ones let's move on to something a little bit later